A few years ago, I would go to a workshop and ask people in the room how many people had heard of biochar. And at that point, a few hands would go up and the majority of the hands would stay down. Biochar is basically just a new word for a really old product or old practice. I go to those, go to workshops now and ask people how many people in here have heard of biochar and the majority of hands are going up. If you've ever had a campfire, you've probably made biochar. So it's just the pure carbon that's left over uh, from the burning process before it turns to ash. So at the end of the night in your campfire, those logs that are charred uh, but still there, that's biochar. The biochar you know, is an old, old technology. It's natural and something that I'm hoping uh, will prove that we can, we can benefit soil health and, and help take carbon out of the atmosphere and put it back into the soils and provide, provide benefits uh, to soil for, for sustainable uh, agricultural activities and sustainable and environmental uh, benefit. Biochar, the great thing I really think about it is that it can be used and made on so many scales. You can make biochar without any special equipment. Um, and if you're into gardening, if you, um, whether that's flowers or vegetable gardening or if you compost at home, uh, biochar can play a really nice role. This property has been um, uh, abandoned since I would say like the 50s. We would like to uh, be able to sell uh, to people that come in uh, poultry, free range poultry. Um, and also with that, we were looking at uh, doing some vegetables as well as uh, uh, some berries. In the poultry barns, we wanna use the biochar in the bedding to help with uh, ammonia capture and as well as um, moisture. And then we can take that bedding again and turn it around and use that in, in the, the production of the, the, the vegetables or the fruits. It probably started about 20 years ago when I became the camp manager and realized that the shrub honeysuckle was going to be a huge issue. So we ended up burning it a lot. That led to the realization that the leftover charcoal, if we didn't burn it down to ash, was uh, a useful product that we could actually use around the camp. When we put it in the trails, that seems to raise the level of the trail, create a harder solid surface and people really generally like it um, more than the mud. And so that's probably the easiest way that we can use it and it seems to be really effective. Uh, it, was, it was threefold. Uh, the first thing was just to explore biochar with nutrients to maximize our nutrients so we could reduce in theory with using biochar. Uh, the second thing, we kind of wanted to compare uh, biochar versus biochar with compost. And third, having a control, having nothing. In three areas, pollinators, garden, and then here what you're seeing is uh, a typical field. And then the last thing, um, really wanted to see if we could increase uh, the quality of the plants and the seeds. Uh, in terms of soil health. We're all trying to make connections from the soil, to the plant, to what you produce, to our bellies. I would like to have a better idea of what goes in the soil, what comes to my plants. In Nebraska and a lot of the Great Plains, um, eastern red cedar is a really big issue. It's encroaching into pastures, encroaching into forests that didn't historically have a large eastern red cedar presence. And that's creating a lot of issues for landowners. That is perfect for making biochar. Kind of the brushier the better when it comes to feedstocks for biochar. So I see biochar as playing a big role or having the, the opportunity to play, play a big role in eastern red cedar management. A lot of opportunities in the water quality side of things. Um, we here in Kansas and probably in Nebraska as well, blue-green algal, blue algal blooms are becoming a pretty common uh, issue along around a lot of our, our reservoirs. And uh, so I think that if we could make biochar 
bags, if you will, big stockings filled with biochar and put those into some of the ravines um, where water is filtering off of these ag fields and excess nutrients and all that are getting into the streams and then entering into the bigger water bodies and, be, and causing problems that way. I'm wondering whether if we couldn't put some of these big char bags uh, in the stream, let the water filter through that, it would lock that, it would basically take that or purify that material uh, as it flows through and then we would have cleaner water entering our lakes and then potentially if we could do some testing on that char coming out it would actually be kind of a fertilizer that we could then apply back to the landscape um, and, and be a win-win uh, situation for landowners and for the general public.